Hey, this video's uh, introduction to uh, the technologies that I'm going to be using in my Our LoRa project. Um, so it's going to be using LoRa radio, uh, also going to be using LoRa WAN uh, internet connectivity, You're going to use the Things Network and then a bunch of other tooling to to do the actual uh, software and uh, testing various aspects of LoRa. LoRa is uh, radio technologies, it's for po providing low power long-range uh, uh, connectivity for things like IoT devices, which is how I'm going to be using it in the, our LoRa project. Uh, I provide a lot of links and the details to this video, so go down there to see a, a good uh, detailed description of LoRa. But again, LoRa is just uh, radio technology, has some sp special characteristics and capabilities for allowing it to be very low power, but uh, getting wide uh, range of a uh, wide geographic range of uh, connectivity going. On top of the LoRa radio uh, service, uh, I'm using LoRa WAN technology. So this is uh, managed by a LoRa WAN consortium. And these are services that run on a layer above the, the basic radio layer of LoRa and uh, allows you to capture the data being sent over uh, LoRa radio and send it on to uh, your own internet-based services for for uh, richer services using that data. And also uh, there's various service providers that provo provide LoRa WAN uh, services. The one I'm using is a community-driven service called the Things Network, which has pretty good coverage of uh, uh, LoRa WAN uh, connectivity. Um, so uh, what the law, the Things Network provides is uh, both gateway services, and you see here there's gateways where you can connect your LoRaWAN devices uh, to. Uh, kind of the emphasis is that grew out of Europe, so there's a lot of LoRaWAN gateways in Europe, so good coverage there. Probably less so in the US, um, but it is a global uh, uh, service it's a free service which is good and uh, it's increasing all the time and usually what you're doing if if you do start using the services you uh, install your own gateway which are fairly low cost uh, for doing your own development and uh, and sending data over LoRaWAN uh, so here I am on the things network it's uh, it's good to go through this initial video on the home page and once you've done that you're probably going to set up your own account so that you can uh, do what I'm doing here is set up your own gateway I have one gateway and set up your own applications so by managing your own gateway you can do things like and here's an example of a gateway that I've got going I can do things like view traffic coming into that that gateway so I've got a node running that sends data every 10 seconds or so so we start to see the data coming in to my gateway. Uh, so this is kind of the at the gateway level, just uh, telling you about uh, more technical aspects, kind of the interface to to LoRa. And I've also got applications set up to make use of the data coming in through the gateway. And by the way, it doesn't have to come in through your own gateway. Uh, if any LoRa uh, or any Things Network gateway sees your data then it'll be sent on to be processed in your application so again i have a view into the the data that's uh, coming into the things network and then being uh, managed by uh, managed by my particular application so i'm doing things like breaking up the data and in the data that's been sent uh, to this application and you can also do things like integrations where you can send that data once uh, processed on the front end out of the Things Network to your own internet-based services for uh, further processing. That's kind of where you're going to do your, your real business application or real application uh, based on the data that's coming in from LoRaWAN. So uh, next video I'm going to have a look at... Uh, more in-depth look at the tooling I'm using. So I'm going to have a look at a node that I set up for experimentation. So based on the nodes that's sending this data at the the moment, uh, showing the tooling that I use to do that. Um, also going to look at some additional tooling. So uh, for seeing the LoRa transmissions over the year, 
I'm using a software to find radio uh, uh, hardware and software to see those transmissions. And also you'll find that you're doing uh, a fair bit of uh, antenna tuning as well with the LoRa uh, to make sure you're getting the best uh, use of uh, LoRa radio. Um, so I'll show you uh, tooling that I use to make sure my antenna is doing the best job possible for my LoRa services. Okay, first piece of tooling I'm using is the LoRaWAN Indoor Gateway. Uh, it's from LoRaWAN Industries. I've put the link to that in the details for this video be below. Uh, the good thing about this is it's easy to connect to the LoRaWAN, the Things Network, and it's pretty cheap. It's under 100 US dollars. Uh, seems to work well. Uh, it's great for development. So that's the first piece of equipment I'm using. Our next piece of equipment is this microcontroller from Helltech. Uh, it's a Helltech uh, LoRa ESP32 version 2. And uh, I added a code to it to do uh, test LoRaWAN uh, transmission. So you can see here it's joining the network. Start sending data every 10 seconds. I set it up so I can do things like change the, the sending interval. So uh, 10 seconds good for testing, but normally you don't want to send lower WAN transmissions that often. So by pressing the prog button on the microcontroller, I can up the the sending uh, interval to 60 seconds. Uh, pressing it one more time, ups it to 600 seconds or 10 minutes. Uh, also got LEDs flashing to tell me when it's sending data. Uh, I can do things like uh, press the reset button to restart the transmissions. Now this was useful for doing things like uh, I was using TT Mapper to see what sort of uh, reception I was getting in different locations by my gateway. So you can see here where TT Mapper mapped those things out. So the tooling I'm using for my coding. Uh, so uh, for the Helltech ESP32 board, uh, I'm using the, uh, the platform IO add-in for VS Code. So here's the site for platform IO. I actually, uh, all the code that I created for this, I've put up into my GitHub uh, public repository. So you can go to this some of DA Helltech LoRaWAN uh, repository and get a, a copy of the code that I'm using to uh, load the mission onto my Helltech board. And uh, let's have a look at the code. So uh, the platform IO add-in is running in VS Code. So here's VS Code. Uh, the reason I'm using this rather than the Adreno UI, which uh, you commonly use for this sort of thing, is it has better integration with uh, GitHub, at least I find. And I'm more familiar with VS Code, so I can integrate it with my other projects uh, easier this way as well. Um, so the actual uh, code is a combination of libraries. Uh, so the libraries I'm using is the Helltech ESP32 uh, library and the Things Network ESP32 library um, that's been uh, altered to work with the Helltech development board. So some of the pin IOs and things needed to get get changed. Um, again, if you download this project from GitHub, uh, these libraries will come down. I'm not doing this in a great way, so I probably shouldn't be exposing the .pio folder, but uh, I, I needed to to get the alterations I've made to these libraries up there, but uh, I may change it around and I really need to get these moved over to lib to show that the libraries are specific to this application. Uh, but the reason behind uh, putting together this uh, version of a LoRaWAN node was really just to be able to test things out uh, for the our LoRa application I'm planning on moving over to using a MicroPython based uh, node so I won't be using any of these libraries there I'll be doing it all in MicroPython so if you want to see more on that go to our LoRa um, again there's links to all this tooling in the uh, and the comments associated with this uh, this video. So let's have a look at the code. So the code's under the main 
CPP file or the most of the interesting codes there. Uh, so some of the things I had to do was define what my LED IO pin was, what my button. So when you press that button to to change the uh, the CN transmit uh, interval, uh, that's button zero. Uh, you have to set up the LoRa band you're using. So I'm in the US, so I'm using the 915 uh, uh, megahertz band. If in the, you're in Europe, you'd be using the 80, 868 band. Uh, I have to set up some uh, some the things network specific uh, keys uh, so that the data from my uh, node goes to the things network and then gets forwarded to the appropriate application. So you need these application keys. Um, I'm probably going to delete these so uh, these won't be valid ones by the time this video goes up. Uh, other things in here is an example of uh, uh, a block of data that I want to send up to LoRaWAN. So this is, uh, was some of my experimentation with how to format that uh, data and what it looks like when I get it up to TTN. It's kind of the reason for having this node, but uh, uh, you see I'm using unsigned ints and putting data into the, that structure. You'll see later on how it gets sent and we can have a look in the uh, TTN uh, uh, service uh, uh, view of the application to see how it's getting received on the TTN server side of things. Um, so generally uh, when we go through this code there's a setup stage which gets performed once at the start and then there's a, a loop uh, that gets performed over and over again after that. Uh, so I'm doing things like setting up the, the serial port interface. So uh, this is how it talks back to my serial port in VS Code. Um, just a note in here, and there's lots of platform I.O. Uh, videos out there that you need to set the monitor speed on your platform I.O. interface to make sure that's the same as what you set the serial port to uh, in your main program. I'm um, using the Helltech display, so you might have seen it in the video uh, we are showing the, the Helltech node that it displays status information. So I'm using the Helltech display to display those. So you can see an example of that here. Um, here's the join routine. So we saw again in that previous video how it was uh, joining the TTT, TTN uh, network. Um, once it's joined, it goes into this loop routine and basically it's going around in this loop uh, to send data uh, every uh, uh, every tick transmit delay number of seconds. Uh, you can run through this code to see what it's doing, but again, I'm using the Helltech display routine to display what's happening on my board as well as sending uh, information back to the serial port so I can also monitor on my uh, VS Code uh, terminal here what's going on. I'm sending the bytes, so this is where it's using that my sensor data structure uh, with a the size parameter of what that sensor data is and it's using this TTN send byte routine which is down in this TTN library to send the data up to, to LoRaWAN and TTN network. And then uh, the last bit here is where it's dealing with the button presses. Uh, this is not really elegant code but again it's really just hacky code to, to get my node going. So this is where it's looking at what the current delay is and switching up to the next delay. Uh, depending on whether that button got pressed, it's looking at that information every uh, second or so. Um, if it changes, then it's showing the new uh, delay seconds on my display and uh, then carries on delaying uh, whatever number of seconds I've set as the current delay. So text delay, it'll loop through there with a one second delay each time, however many text delays there are. To be done so you know 10 seconds would be 10 60 seconds would be 60. Uh, so that's it uh, the nice thing about platform io and vs code is you can just press this button here to compile the code and send it up to your uh, helltech development board and then it starts running the code so uh, kind of a nice way to to work you find that it, uh, it's really elegant uh, again, this is going to be a one-time effort, so the code doesn't look that great. I'm going to, uh, for the rest of my development, I'm going to switch over to using the PyCom4 
I think it's the low pi four board uh, and do everything in MicroPython because I'm more familiar with that language and that development environment. So here we can see in the, uh, the Things Network uh, app application data console the structure that I'd set up in my uh, in the ESP32 code uh, to send up to the via LoRaWAN uh, up in the top right hand side uh, you see I'm putting count into the first uint32 uh, item uh, the count at the time that this ran was 957 you can see what that count looks like on the uplink payload uh, in binary and then it also shows my uh, my data processing code where it's actually converting that to back to the original value. Okay, beyond the coding uh, tooling, I also wanted to see the transmissions over the air, so I'm using a software defined radio to do that. So I'm using this hardware uh, called NESDR. Then I'm using this SDR or software defined radio uh, software from AirSpy uh, to actually look at the the transmissions. Uh, the other thing I needed to know was the frequency that these transmissions go out at. So if I look at the US uh, frequency plan, uh, it's basically going from about 902 megahertz and for uplinks uh, up to about 905 megahertz and then downlinks uh, up in the 928 megahertz range. So I just want to look at the uplinks. So you see here where I'm using the SDR uh, smart uh, software to look at the the transmissions being sent by my uh, my SP32 node. You can see here where on each transmission that's sending the the data and uh, shown in the waterfall diagram below uh, what range of frequencies that uh, transmission happens at. Also you can see in the blip up the top uh, the actual uh, uh, magnitude of the transmission. As well I wanted to compare the frequencies that have been sent out over the air through that I've seen on the SDR radio with what uh, LoRaWAN was was seen it as. So in LoRaWAN gateway I can see the transmission frequency and I can compare that with what uh, uh, TTN Networks thinks the transmission frequency is. And the nice thing is they came in right on the on the nose as the same transmission frequency, which is kind of what you'd expect. Uh, so this is kind of useful mainly to, for seeing the magnitude of the transmissions, but also seeing what frequencies they occur at and uh, for kind of sanity ch checking some of your LoRa uh, activity to make sure things are happening at the frequencies and when you expect them to happen. Okay, the final piece of equipment I'm using is Nano VNA. Uh, so with LoRaWAN, because it's a radio technology, I wanted to check that the antennas I'm using were at the resonant frequency that I expect so I get the best uh, uh, radio uh, usage that I can. Uh, so I'm using this Nano VNA again in the details uh, associated with this video. It has all the links and a good tutorial on using Nano VNA. But you can see here that for the aerial that I'm using for my uh, node, it came in uh, below what I was expecting. That should be at 915 megahertz resonant frequency for US. Uh, it's lower, so uh, it tells me that I need to work on my, my aerials to get them at the right resonant frequencies.